Hey there! In this video, we'll deal with the timer. Every 100 milliseconds, the duration will be increased and the text view updated. Let's get into it and create a new class and name it timer. New Kotlin class timer with a capital T because it's a class. In here, we'll need a handler and a runnable to perform this task. So the handler schedules the update action and the runnable will carry out this action that is update the duration and notify the main activity each 100 milliseconds. So create two class level variables. The first one is the handler, private var handler, initialize it here because we can select the OS one and give it a looper looper dot get main looper okay now the second one is the runnable so it's a private late init var runnable of type runnable let's add then a duration and delay variables of type long private var first one is duration set it to zero at start and the second one is a delay and set it to 100 milliseconds let's add a initialization block and in here initialize the runnable instance and set its behavior so runnable equal runnable and it should first increase the duration by the de delay and then set the handler to delay the action handler dot past delayed and give it the runnable and the delay so this line should start the runnable in 100 milliseconds and then the runnable will be executing these two lines first one increment then rerun itself here we're just initializing the action the behavior we're not starting it yet to start this let's add a start function private fun start so this one here should trigger the runnable handler dot past delayed runnable and delay when this function is called the handler starts the runnable in 100 milliseconds it again executes this line to increment the duration and then reschedule another runnable action. Now let's add a pause function. Here all we need to do is to remove the scheduled runnable from the handler and that's a uh, and that prevents it to re-execute again now let's just copy this function paste it below and rename it to stop basically what the stop function does is the same thing as the pause and on top of this it resets the duration to zero now i need a way to inform the main activity every 100 milliseconds to update the text view to do this, I will fire a callback function from within the runnable and implement the reaction in the main activity. To do this, we'll use an interface. So here define an interface and just call it um, interface and call it on timer tick listener. This one here uh, should implement a function on timer tick and this function has a duration parameter as a string so at each step I should call on timer tick listener from the runnable so here after the pause delayed action let's just call the on timer tick on the listener and to be able to use this we need to receive a on timer tick listener instance when creating the timer call it listener of type on timer tick listener and just call it here 
listener dot on timer ticks and should receive a duration so we have our duration but it's a long so let's convert it to string for now just for the purpose of testing now we're nearly done here let's head to the main activity and extend the interface we just created on timer tick listener now our main activity is an app compat activity and on time listener tick or on timer tick listener we need to implement the method on timer tick and each time this function is fired let's uh, print something like the duration okay now let's define the timer here private lead init var timer type timer and initialize it in the onCreate function timer equal timer and it needs actually it's not tire but timer and remember it needs a listener on timer tick listener now we give it this as an argument and since this refers to the activity and the activity is also on a timer tick listener therefore this should work so the timer has access to this method and can call it then the main activity decides what to do with it in our case just print it now in the start function let's start the timer here at the bottom of the function start timer oh did we define it private okay let's head back there actually it should be just public so remove private and it becomes public okay set back now on um, in the pause function just call timer dot pause and in the resume it's called timer dot start and in the stop where is it uh, where is it where is it where is it actually we don't have it yet so let's create it and we'll be using it in the next videos this one should just call the timer dot stop we'll deal with its complete behavior later so now let's see how it looks like run it and give it a moment here it is actually let's uh, show the run terminal and start recording we have a message every 100 milliseconds if we stop it there's no more messages we run it again it continues but it stops okay now instead of printing it let's show it here and since normal human beings usually have trouble interpreting milliseconds when it exceeds a thousand in the timer class add another function to translate the duration to human readable format so here call it uh, function and format this one should return a string here we'll do some math calculations first let's extract the milliseconds from the duration actually just the milliseconds so to do this let's get the duration and compute a modulo of a thousand to have just the excess milliseconds more less than thousand then compute the seconds which is the duration divided by a thousand because a second has a thousand milliseconds and get just anything that is less than 60 same thing for minutes duration divided by thousand times 60 and modulo 60 same thing lasting hours 
this one its duration divided by a thousand times 60 times another 60 because in an hour we have 60 minutes in a minute we have 60 seconds and in a second we have a thousand milliseconds same thing for minutes we have 60 seconds and every second has a thousand milliseconds same thing here a second is a thousand milliseconds so here we need to return something so let's define the variable we need to return and if we have hours is greater than zero then we should return the formatted version with the hours so a percent zero 2d it's to give it uh, two digits at a time that's for the hours the second one is for the minutes another one for the seconds and the last one for the milliseconds now format it uh, give it hours minutes seconds and milliseconds now copy paste this and in the else statement just give it the same thing except the hours now return it okay in the Runnable definition. Let's call the on tick, on timer tick with the formatted version. Okay, in the main activity, instead of printing it, let's just set it into the text view. Text view timer dot text equals duration. Let's check this. Start. Yeah. Stop. Start again. Okay, so it's annoying to have it on three digits. So let's actually in the timer divide this by 10. Now, just for the fun of it, let's add some haptic touch feedback when uh, we click on the record button. So to do this, we'll need the vibrator. So define it here private. Like in it vibrator type vibrator and here just beneath the timer initialize it get system service context vibrator service as vibrator now whenever we click this button the record button just vibrate We'll give it a vibration effect and create one shot. Get 50 milliseconds and a pattern. And we can obviously notice that everything is in red because we didn't ask for the permission in the manifest file. So let's copy and paste this and call the vibrates. Now head back and everything should enter into order. If we run this again, we should notice two things. The first one is that the milliseconds is on two digits and we have a vibration here. Oh, there's still missing something here. Oh, because we just did it in one case. Now we have it on the two cases. Run again. And start. And everything is great. So that's it for this video. The next one, we will add a waveform when recording.
See you then.